Okay, so in this video, we want to do a quick review of what a fraction is. When you consider a fraction, you have to first determine what is a whole, what is your base unit. Now, there are two natural choices. One would be to consider a line segment. The other, which has a nicer geometric appeal to it, is considering a circle. And you can think of a circle as a pie. So imagine that this is a whole unit, so a pie. So if you consider, say, one half, and you ask, well, what does that mean? Well, dividing by two means divide the whole into two parts of equal size. And the numerator here, one says, take one part out of the two parts. So with respect to the whole, the given circle, the shaded region consists of one half. We took one part out of the total number of two parts. And of course, the two parts are of equal size. Well, what if we considered, say, 1 over 3? Well, if you consider 1 over 3, you must divide the whole, the circle, into three parts of equal size. So imagine that these three parts are of equal size, and now we're saying we take one part out of the three parts. So the shaded region would be one-third. If we set, of course, two-thirds instead of one-third, then we would also take this region as well. So this with this would be corresponding to two-thirds. What about one-quarter? So if you look at one-quarter, now we divide the whole into four parts of equal size. And we take one part out of the four parts. So this would correspond to a quarter. What if we looked at, say, 1 over 5? Now we have to divide the whole into five parts of equal size. And again, we only take one part out of the five given pieces. So shading this region would correspond to one over five. Of course, if we said, say, three over five, then we would also take this region and this one as well. Let's look at one more, 1 over 6. So now we divide the whole, the circle, into 6 parts of equal size. And we take only one part out of the total number of 6 parts. So this region would correspond to 1 over 6. And at this stage, you see the picture, right? We could keep going like this forever. We could divide the whole, the circle, into seven parts of equal size, or eight parts of equal size, and so on. So why am I doing this now? 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, and so forth. So I keep dividing 1 into a larger and larger number of parts. I keep dividing my circle, my unit, into a larger, larger number of parts. And every time I only take one slice out of the two the three, the four, the five, the six total number of slices. Well, I'm leading up to the following point, which is as n tends to infinity, and by that we mean as n, thinking of n being a positive integer, gets larger and larger and larger without bounds, the reciprocal one over n will tend to zero. So 1 over n will be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So if you think about it this way, as you divide your circle into a larger and larger number of parts, right? So you divide the circle into two parts, three parts, four parts, five parts, six parts, and so on. Well, the parts are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So if you take one part out of a total of n parts, and you take more and more parts, then the fraction of the whole circle you're taking is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can also look at this in terms of a numerical perspective. 
right? What if you look at multiples of 10? So what if you take, say, n to be 10? Then 1 over 10 is 0 0.1. What if you take 1 over 100? Then in decimals, this is 0 0.01. If you take 1 over 1,000, again in decimals, this is 0 0.001. If you take, say, 1 over now 10,000, this is 0 0.0001, and so on. And you can see, as you divide 1 into a larger and larger number of parts, the parts are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can also see it geometrically. And so as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, 1 over n gets smaller and smaller and smaller, therefore shrink to 0. 